everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. So I have posted in the past, uh, I don't know when it was, a week ago perhaps, the uh, video entitled Calvin Klein Enters Raph Simmons. I also posted the video Givenchy Exits Tishy. And, uh, but, uh, you know, as I was filming the video um, Calvin Klein Enters Raph Simmons, as I was filming it, the ad campaign and even more so the actual show were not out yet. And a lot of you have been asking me in the comments of the other videos, so what do I actually think of the ad campaign? Why am I not commenting on the ad campaign? Well, because when I shot the video, there was no ad campaign yet. So now to make things right by you, I'm making the video, my commentary on the Calvin Klein ad campaign, as well as the Calvin Klein fashion show, both under the director or the direct, um, the artist direction of Raph Simmons. So as far as the ad campaign is concerned, uh, and you could check it everywhere, you could go on the Calvin Klein Instagram profile, you could just Google it, Calvin Klein ad campaign, Raph Simmons. Um, what, you know, what strikes is this, okay, well, first we, we, we debated and discussed in the past video the actual logo change, and most of you are in favor of the old logo. Some of you, however, do prefer the new logo, all in capital font letters. I, uh, and you could go check out my video in the description box down below. I will post a link to the first video on this topic. I, however, do prefer the original logo, and I explain why in my other video. But, you know, as I was analyzing this logo situation, the ad campaign wasn't out yet, on, nor was the fashion show. Now, having all of those pieces of the puzzle together, the old and new logo, the ad campaign, and the fashion show. So these three pieces give us a bigger, broader puzzle picture. And that puzzle picture is kind of fascinating because I, you know, I kind of understand and think that I know more where Calvin and where Calvin, where Raph Simmons is coming from, changing the logo. I still do not approve of it. And here's a simple reason why. And actually, what proves me right is the ad campaign. And I didn't have the ad campaign to kind of prove myself right in the other video, but now I have it. Um, so in the ad campaign, we see um, in the Warhol Museum, I, I guess they were, in, in, in front of some of Warhol's, Warhol's paintings, uh, models in, in underwear or, or jeans or, or just an underwear, standing in front of them, kind of just turning their back to the camera and just, you know, being a part of that artwork, basically, where Raph Simmons then in an interview or a statement said, you know, these um, pieces of Calvin Klein garments, which is the iconic Calvin Klein underwear, the, the iconic Calvin Klein jeans, um, are part of Americans and the world's kind of cultural and artistic heritage. They have become iconic. These are icons of our society. These are icons of our culture. Hence, they belong in a museum together with all of these paintings that also depict, because Calvin Klein is from America, that also depict these American artists. Except we forget the fact that Andy Warhol came from Poland. But as we know, and this is another one of the statements that Calvin Klein is going to hint at in the actual fashion show, he wanted to make kind of a political statement about the fact that America embraces all nations, all nationalities, there's almost no such thing as an American because everybody kind of is an immigrant that came into America and then became American. If we really want to go into what is really American, then we got uh, the native Indians who are actually not American, but they, they call their country in a different way. It wasn't even called, it wasn't a country, it was a land. So it, it wasn't America. So America is invented and constructed and whoever today abides by the rules and the laws of America and the United States of America to be considered American, you need to be a citizen. You don't necessarily need to be just born there because there is no such thing as a pure American. Pure American is in the heart. We get it, Raf, except I have the feeling you kind of you put that kind of concept all together, given the circumstances right now, politically speaking, that we are facing uh, when you were developing this collection. I, I, unless, I mean, I think you have been developing this collection. Uh, I'm sure you were developing this collection before even knowing who would have been president. So I don't really buy your kind of now saying that the construct is pushing towards... Um, a critique of the government 
that we are living in today uh, in America. Now, I, I personally, you know, I know how long it takes to, to create a, a show, to create a collection. And it's not like, so from the moment Donald Trump became president, uh, that's when you started working on your collection. Maybe that's when you started working on how to advertise your collection. But the collection was said before the election. So let's just be honest there, boo. Hmm? Uh, on another note, uh, going back to why, how I can prove to you that I believe, I really believe that uh, there's an ego at stake here when it comes to logo change. So as I said before, we have the model standing in front of these art pieces, and uh, Simmons wants to tell us the underwear and the jeans are uh, as iconic and to be considered part of the culture, the DNA of America, just as these art pieces. But correct me if I'm wrong, a part of the iconic um, allure of the Calvin Klein underwear is the logo on that underwear. And it's a specific type of logo with a specific type of font. And um, we find that logo also within the iconic genes of Calvin Klein. So... If you are saying, indeed, that uh, the underwear and the jeans merit uh, iconic cult status, almost, art status, uh, then so does the logo. But there you decided, because it's more comfortable for you, that that, is, that doesn't merit iconic status and art and cult status. So... What you're doing there is a very shrewd little tactic, my dear. And that is to say, nobody has elevated it to that status officially. Now that I arrive, I am giving these pieces that status. And while I'm at it, I'm going to pee to mark my own territory because that cult and art and iconic status is given to these pieces. So because I'm doing so, so I have the right to change the logo. And the new logo is my contribution to this iconography. Shady, to say the least. And mind you, this is, this just, the ad campaign just reinforces uh, my belief that there's an ego at game here um, and a power game at stake or a power game going on here uh, since, you know, I had that kind of feeling about it before I saw the ad campaign and now that I've seen it even more so. Then let's talk about the actual fashion show, the color blocking. A lot of the silhouettes were very typical. Uh, Raph, uh, he invited an artist to create kind of... You mean the show took place in the spaces of the Calvin Klein offices, in the kind of the atrium, the entrance, uh, the reception area. Uh, so it kind of all stayed close to home or actually within home. And uh, this artist kind of, you know, created all this... Mm, Kind of like a separate, all these materials hanging everywhere, semi-torn, uh, shredded threads or ornaments or a lot of different things. I, I wasn't there live, so I, I only saw photos, so I can't go into detail about that. But a lot of the people that were there really thought, didn't understand that that was an art piece. And then kind of only later understood that there was a kind of a manipulation from an art point of view and a collaboration with an artist together with Raph Simmons, to create the environment. And it is also said that it is part of a three-part representation or depiction of the whole concept or what have you. So we're still missing another two parts. I mean, I have dug into it. I've done my research. I'm delivering to you the news as I get them. But uh, as of now, he's kind of keeping us in the dark. The reasons why we are kept in the dark, I guess, probably because they're speculating that that way they're going to arouse more interest and the people are going to want to know more. But I have the feeling they're just layering a little bit too many aspects. They're putting too much salt or sauce or, or ingredients in the soup. And it's kind of they're kind of risking to over spice it. And then it's going to lose all of its real flavor. Now going back to the actual garments and pieces of the collection, you know, showcase men and women. Um, we have a very typical uh, Raph Simmons signature a type of color blocking and patterning. Um, and he did implement 
the genes, he did implement the denim, he did implement something that is so traditional to the heritage of Calvin Klein within American kind of culture and American uh, lifestyle. And we know that, you know, Calvin Klein represents the easygoing lifestyle juxtaposed to the La Ralph Lauren, representing and depicting the self proclaimed American aristocracy uh, and riches. So we have these two really humongous designers, you know, that kind of hold, that the kind of are on top of these two pillars that they themselves hold that kind of keep up the entire American fashion world afloat. Everything else kind of like a tree branches out of those, basically those two designers. Um, when we talk about America, of course. So, and but nevertheless, a lot of those clothes just did not speak to me. Um, the ones that were more intrinsically, uh, particularly Raph Simonsonian, were the ones that spoke to me. The ones that tried to be more Calvin Klein failed, in my personal opinion. This could be due to several reasons. Now, it's just... Perhaps one reason is it's just my personal opinion and who cares? Everybody has their own. Second, if there is something uh, right about what I think, maybe perhaps Raf is just a little bit clumsy in this realm of Calvin Kleinism and it's just kind of learning to use that DNA, to, is, is learning to um, adapt to that language, the Calvin Klein language. And... You know, to be perfectly honest with you, when a designer just arrives to a new maison or a new fashion house, they, they have to, you know, give them some time to adapt, to kind of understand how to work with the tools given to them by that DNA of that brand. So I'm not going to judge there because I think perhaps he just needs that time to get more into the flow of things. Again, if he were to let aside his ego... Uh, he would definitely embrace more what Calvin Klein has to offer. And with time, we will see progressive, uh, you know, better doing and a pro progressive better adaptation uh, of uh, or symbiosis between Raph Simmons and Calvin Klein. I'm going to make a very weird comparison now, so it's going to perhaps gross some of you out, but it's not meant in any shady way. But I've said this in other videos in the past. It's like when you have a virus. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, a virus, let's take, for example, the herpes virus uh, <laughs> juxtaposed to the HIV virus. Um, it is in the interest of the virus to keep its host alive, because otherwise the virus itself becomes inactive. Uh, so um, herpes is a very, very ancient, it's a very old virus. So it has adapted very, very, very well. It's very symbiotic with the, well, symbiotic, not really. It's not that the host needs the virus to live, but the virus itself has adapted very well to its host, meaning it keeps it alive, it doesn't kill the host. It managed to balance out, it bursts out from time to time, then it recedes back into the nervous uh, terminations of the nerves of the host. You can't really eradicate it. It's always there, but it doesn't kill you. And it's, it's just there, the right amount of time and, and, and the right amount of it activating itself and being latent again to be able to proliferate and spread to other hosts without killing them. And this is something that a virus managed to achieve through evolution in many, many, many years. It's because it's an old virus. HIV, on the other hand, is a relatively young and new virus. We're fighting it, yes, but the person infected with HIV, if not treated will eventually die due to that virus. And this virus is very aggressive because it's also a very young virus. It's a virus that still hasn't adapted to its host. It's not in the interest of the virus to annihilate and delete and terminate the host. But since it's a very new virus, it still hasn't adapted. You need many, 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 many generations for it to adapt, to understand that actually to function with the human body, for it to keep the human body alive and the host and uh, procreate itself. So. That would be in the interest of the virus, one would think. So yeah, it's a creepy comparison, but it delivers to you kind of that idea, you know, Raph is relatively, he's new to Calvin Klein. So let's give him time to see if he can adapt. As far as the first collection goes, there's nothing in it that I would really like to have. I did love uh, 
the idea of the cowboy boots. Now, but of course, it's a very easy thing to do. You're in America, so you're going to do cowboy boots as kind of also a slight twist to the symbology of Western America. Uh, and, you know, but it's, it's, it's a typical thing a, a European designer, I think, would approach when they come to, you know, it's a, it's a cliche. It's like, yeah, of course, cowboy boots, that's America. Well, no, America is so much more than just cowboy boots. Nevertheless, those are some beautiful cowboy boots. I love the colorways. I love that thick leather. Like, they don't even bend. Those boots are just like, I'm sure they're so uncomfortable for like the first three months you're wearing them before the leather kind of like gives in and becomes more comfortable and adapted to your body. And again, that's also very symbolic, you see, because just as I said, I think Raph needs to still adapt to Calvin. It's interesting that a lot of these garments feel like they really need a lot of time for them to adapt and a lot of pain and effort put into wearing those pieces until they adapt to you. So I think it kind of really interestingly reflects, a lot of those garments reflect the need for adaptation. And, you know, we need that. And he needs that adaptation. He needs to let go of his ego a bit more and kind of enter the symbiotic relationship with Calvin Klein. So this is my opinion. It wasn't shady. I'm honestly, I think there's potential there. There's uh, definitely a lot of room for development, for um, uh, for in enhancing even more this experience of Ralph Simmons at Calvin Klein. This was just the beginning. It was a relatively modest beginning, to be honest with you. So let's see and hope that better and more comes in the future. I'm looking forward to either way to this, even no matter how complex, layered, and futile and useless it is, but I'm looking forward to this like three-part depiction that they're mentioning about what's coming in the future when it comes to this advertisement and installations and artist collaborations. No clue what they're doing, but looking forward to it. Either way, it's going to give us more saucy ingredients and, um, you know, uh, fertile soil for creating for creating your videos for you guys so thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video if you have please do thumb it up share it with the people you love and don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on youtube i'm also on instagram facebook and twitter no matter how non-symbiotic the relationship you think you are in seems to be Give it some time, give it all your love, all your effort, and no matter how it goes out in the end, never give up on love. Love you guys, see you soon, take care, bye.